It's Rick and RJ from Keeping It Real. Today we're going to be talking about minimalism. Are you flexing right now? <laughs> I just got this wicked tan, and look at the lighting on that. You know what he has? Woo! Minimal body fat right now. That is correct. Minimal you body fat. You know how much fat. weight I lost? 10 pounds. Oh, I, I didn't think. I didn't. Oh, sorry. I didn't think I had 10 pounds to lose. Yeah, no shit. That's crazy. I, I went to my doctor, right? Yeah. And we were doing my blood work. I get my blood work done frequently. Yeah. And he asked me, "Do you ha- did you notice any weight loss? And I said, I don't know. Let's weigh myself, right? So yeah. I was down 10 pounds. I said, why? Busting balls, right? Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm losing weight, Marvin. What's going on? He's like, oh, I don't know. He was starting to get scared. Blood work. Let's do blood yeah, work. And speaking cup. of tan, right? So I have this, uh, I don't know if you can see it or not. Spray tan? Okay, so any reason to take his shirt off this guy, just so you know, everybody watching it at home. Sorry. Anyways, I got, <laughs> so I had this little sticker thing on my shoulder and, uh, oh, okay. so she spray tanned me and I guess she didn't want to tell me that it was on there. I forgot it was on my neck. Right. So we use this thing for pain and I put it on my oh, neck I see. and I don't know, like maybe she just was ashamed to like, Hey, is this supposed to be on here? Like, just ask somebody. Yep. Like, remember we talked about, yep. like, just ask, I know, just ask me. Cause now I got this weird, weird thing on me. So I go to, I go to Marvin, I go, Hey Marvin. Dude, I've been getting this weird discoloration. <laughs> <laughs> so he's looking at it. He's like, oh, my God, what is that? <laughs> right? And I was like, I don't know, man. What's, what is that? He's like, oh, I think it's a fungal. He's like, I will get. I got a cream for that. Don't worry. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I busted his balls because he's so serious, right? Yeah. I busted his balls in two conversations. Anyways, back to minimalism. That's actually hard. It's hard to bust the balls of serious guys. Oh, I love it. You know, it's the best. But but it's fun because yeah. you want to find that spot where and they're even like, if they don't ah, laugh. Even if they don't laugh, you're yeah. laughing. You're and it's laughing. one of those guys, they register later. It's yeah. not an immediate yes, register. Exactly. That, that's one thing. There's about there's two different guys for ball busting. The yeah. one who immediately get it yeah. and laugh, and then the yeah. other ones that process is like a day later. They're like, that was a good <laughs> that one. That was a good one. That yeah. was a good one. Yeah. Like you ever watch uh, <laughs> Seinfeld? You ever watch Seinfeld, oh, yeah. that episode where George gets roasted about eating the shrimp? Oh. I'm going to just put a monitor on the skybox. Hey, George. The ocean called. They're running out of shrimp. (laughs) The ocean called. They're running out of shrimp. shrimp. Oh! Yes! That's what I should have said! Damn it! (laughs) Another meeting with Riley. Hold the audience, and I bet I can get him to try that line again. <laughs> Who is Riley? George was scarfing shrimp at this meeting, and this guy says, Hey, George, the ocean call. They're running out of shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the comeback. Oh, yeah? Well, the jerk store called. They're running out of you. <laughs> well, you got to be kidding me. I don't hey, the ocean called. They want the shrimp back or something. <laughs> okay. And it took them a week to come up with it. And then they're like, really? Like, it's been a week, George. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember that. But it festered with him yeah. for a full week. And he was trying to come up with the best comeback line. Oh, okay. And it was terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, minimalism. Anyways, minimalism. Uh, let's talk about minimalism. I'm going to tell you why I want to talk about minimalism today is because that was the number one thing that I implemented into my life to become... Uh, I'm not going to say rich, but I'm going to say uh, well, well or off. Yeah. Okay, well or off, I guess. I <laughs> well, mean, well or. Can we get a definition on that, yeah, no, that word, Jerome? Well or. I'm not going to say I'm well <laughs> off yet, but I'm on my way to being well off. So we'll just say okay. I'm well better, or off. Better, you're better. Yeah, well, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> so I got I got 12 points, RJ, that I want to talk about. And right. uh, the first one is going to be, or right, we're going to discuss ways to How do you a, come up with these points, Rick? You always have. A million points for everything. That's just how my brain works. Just point at it, point after point after point. There's no story, just a point. The point. Okay. (laughs) 10 things, 12 things, 25 things to fill in the blank, right? Got it. Got it. So anyways, uh, traveling. World is opening back up. Yeah. You and I have traveled together. Yes. I can tell you that every time I go on a vacation, I usually come back with, uh, if I say I'm going to spend $1,000, I come back with 800. Yeah. Prior to that. Jeez. Prior to that, yeah. if I went to uh, for the minimalist lifestyle, right. I would spend more money. Not only would I spend the cash, yeah. I would also spend on the visa. You'd also find I used to when we travel, we'd bring that money. So if I was like five hundred bucks spending money, I would honestly at the end I would just be getting looking rid of the money. It. Yeah, looking yeah. to spend it, buy some knickknacks or whatever. Yeah, see, I don't do that. We're, I remember I used to travel and I used to bring back 
people things. I know, isn't that, isn't that, so why stupid. do we do that? I don't know. Why do, why do we have it in our head that we need to bring back gifts for everybody? That, that they don't even like. Yeah, it's nickname. It's gar. Everybody knows you spent one dollar on some bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, thanks. Yeah. Thank you for doing that for me. <laughs> and then you never see them wear it. And now, the best thing you the best thing you can do is, hey, where's those earrings I got you? Yeah, exactly. And then they're selling it in the garage sale for ten cents yeah, next exactly, year. Yeah. A complete and absolute yeah, insult. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, uh, some of the things that I implement when I travel, and this is something that I would suggest everybody do, is yeah. uh, live like a local. Yeah. Right. Have you ever gone somewhere and went down into, let's say, their, uh, not necessarily their downtown, but their their most local neighborhood? Yeah. Right. Have you ever eaten off of a cart? Have you ever gone off the uh, tourist strip and then hung out with the dudes just eating that on plastic chairs? Of course. Yeah, dude. It's the best way. It's it authentic. is the best way. But sometimes you actually pay more. So, for instance, in Bali, that's what we did. Oh, yeah. And it was honestly cheaper to go and eat on the strip just because of competition than it was to eat off of the strip. So, when you go down into mm. the jungle, there might only be one restaurant there. Mm -hmm. So, they can charge whatever they want. It's like getting gas up north. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. the further away you drive from Winnipeg, that's all of a sudden true. the gas goes up, right? Yeah. And so, you know, I like the competition and, and uh, you know, the higher end ones, usually like the Walmarts, mm -hmm. right? So, they might not be a Walmart, but they've got more buying power. Mm -hmm. So, often Oftentimes, they're, it's actually cheaper to, to go on the strip. So I do actually price compare. Yeah. And when I find a restaurant, so me, I like to walk into a place. This is the worst thing I hate. Okay. So you go to you go to a mall, right? And they're like, everything on sale. And then you look at the small print. Most things are on sale, right? Or 50% off when you buy 20 items, <laughs> yeah. right? Marketing. I don't even walk in because yeah. I'm like, that's garbage. I don't want to buy one, get one 50. I just want 50. Yeah. Right? So I won't even bother going in. And so... Um, that's the joys of the the higher buying. I forgot where I was going. You know what? That's, <laughs> edit that out. That's your min <laughs> No, no, keep that because that's okay. your minimalist mindset, yeah. right? Whereas previous to that, you would yeah. have been like, oh, that's such a great deal. I buy yeah. one, I get one 50%, but yeah. you're past that. You're smarter than yeah. that now. And all of us should be smarter than that. And just say enough with your marketing rule. Just give me the best price right off right. the bat. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but getting back to your uh, uh, topic of price comparison when it comes to traveling, uh, yes, you're probably going to pay more, especially if you're on a on, on a tourist path. And mm -hmm. what I mean is, let's say that there's some tourist destination. You know the tourists got to go down this road. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they're going to nail you, right? Mm -hmm. But last time, or I don't know, maybe it was two times ago when I was in Mexico, uh, we went off off uh, the Fifth Avenue, which was in uh, Tulum, Cancun. Mm -hmm. I can't remember which one it is. And uh, it was literally like maybe three blocks, but the whole environment changed. It mm -hmm. went from everything fancy, touristy people to straight local people. Mm -hmm. And this guy had a cart and it was, you know, like it, it looked like he'd been, him and his family had been using it for the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. The best tacos I had, super pleasant dude. Him and I had to like write and use calculators in order to communicate because okay. he couldn't speak English. Yeah. But it cost me literally 75 cents for a full taco. Yeah. You know, and then a can of Coke was, uh, I think maybe a dollar US. So I feel like I got great value right there. Yeah. Like, okay. So my top, but my point was yep. when I find a place that takes care of me at the right price, so you don't have to be the cheapest. Mm -hmm. You just can't be the most expensive. Mm -hmm. And if you can find a way to flatline that curve, I'll always continue to do business with you. For sure. Right? And so that's when I find a restaurant, when I travel. So, for instance, when we go to Hawaii, all we do is eat at l and it's, it's very hard for us to eat anywhere else because we know at l and the product is going to be phenomenal. So, for those that don't know, l and is like a... Um, is like a, a Salisbury house, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like a small chain and uh, the meat's always good. The food's always good. The service is the same mm -hmm. and the pricing is in and around the same too. So it's always affordable. Yeah. Um, that's one of our biggest hacks is we find restaurants that are giving you the value at the best price. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. Well, just like when we went to Hawaii, we're, I mean, Hawaii is considered the most expo expensive place for tourists to go, it's if not, not maybe top, top five or something like that. But we went there and we found that uh, that little hole in the wall place. It was still right on the ocean. You know, it just wasn't fancy. Yeah. But the food is really good, and they had uh, you know breakfast, lunch, dinner. Mm -hmm. Super inexpensive. The thing about Hawaii is it it's ex it's cheap to get there, but it's expensive to stay there. Yes. So if you want to be on a main island, so like you and I, we've gone to a couple different islands, mm -hmm. right? So if you want to stay in Oahu, which is like their main one, that's their mainland. Mm -hmm. If you want to stay downtown on the beach, it's going to be expensive. Like mm -hmm. you're basically living on the strip in Vegas kind of thing, yep. right? Yeah. Um, but if you go to like the other islands, which there's like so much more to do and see, mm -hmm. then you could find a place, as long as you don't want to be directly on the water, 
for super cheap for like 200 bucks a night for a family of four easily. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of doing search. And the nice thing about traveling now is that I think most people are getting away from the package deals. Although the package deals are great, especially if you have a family yeah. and you know, you want like the kids center and you for just sure. want everything kind of be all in one place. I think yeah. it's great that way. But at the same time, you can build your own and it's not like before where you'd have to call a travel agent and you know what I mean? Like yeah, you book sure. your flights, you Google the, your flights. What's the cheapest flight? Google does all that for you. Then you go into like Expedia and you look for the cheapest place in a location that you want done. Mm -hmm. You book your car done. You find a grocery store, Boom, right? Yeah. You find your L and L's, you're good. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's gotten cheaper too because Airbnb has become a thing. Yeah. Prior to Airbnb, I would never stay at somebody's home. No. Do you imagine that? Yeah. Like my generation never go where where we would somebody would rent out their their <laughs> room to us. I would never do that. Of course you would go to a hotel. Would you rent your condo out? Uh, I wouldn't now. No, I mean, if I maybe if it was bigger, yeah. if I wasn't there, I would. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I don't know. I'd have a hard time renting out my house, no matter what, if it's going to pay my mortgage, this and that. But just thinking about other people smashing on your bed, <laughs> how do you feel about that? <laughs> like that could get know. pretty nasty. It I don't know how about much you. They're paying me. Yeah, I guess. those towels. You got to burn those towels after. That's for sure. I, I have a feeling. Actually, I, I guess people are different, but I think the majority of people would be mindful and respectful. Yeah, there's some freaks. But man. having said that, <laughs> yeah. hey man, who knows? I guess maybe your own house. Probably not. You got to buy a house. You have to sanitize everything after. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not talking for the old uh, virus. I'm talking about just things. General, yeah. yeah. Just general fluids. RJ, you want to know what's changed my life? Yes, I do called an air fryer me too you have one i have one thanks <laughs> thanks for introducing it to me isn't it the best it's it's the best honestly i thought it was a piece of junk and i thought it was just another thing yeah. okay so you got to remember right when i was single i had it all i had the the george foreman grill i had the chop thing i had you know the toaster oven i had everything toaster oven. and honestly like it was such trash because even i remember using the and not to knock the george foreman but I, you know, it, they don't compare is I would put my meat on there and the meat would come out flat, not crispy and gross. Yep. And I also bought this other air fryer where you just add a teaspoon. I forgot what it was called, but it was maybe one of the higher brands. You're supposed to put a teaspoon of oil, the crispiest fries in the world. We mm. bought that. And honestly, I left it in there for two hours. It never, ever got crispy. Yeah, I know. And so ever since I, uh, this air fryer came into my life, yeah. I'll tell you this much. I've been cooking every day and i look forward to cooking yeah exactly me and i haven't used my stove once since no. i bought it not a single time the, t the top of the stove yes, yes. But, or the oven i guess i should you don't say use oven, i yeah. haven't used Our the oven not. spotless yeah i know yeah. <laughs> it's actually good because yeah. you're never gonna have a dirty appliance if you ever sell your property right, right. this brand new appliance that you've never so used so easy before. to clean so yeah. so here's what it is the air fryer honestly like when i make my eggs so everybody that's trying to cut weight, right? Everybody knows if you overconsume carbohydrates, it's eventually going to lead to fat. It, it's true and not true, but let's just say for common sense, a lot of people try to avoid carbs. But why speaking, do we like agree, yeah. why do we like carbohydrates? Why do we like bread? We like the crunchy, we like the crispiness, right? Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you this, I pan fry my eggs, I just cook them enough, right? Cuz I put a bunch of spices and everything in it. I cook them enough, I throw them in the air fryer with my turkey bacon, mm -hmm. and the turkey bacon comes out like chips i know like it's amazing like i go through a pack of turkey bacon every two days it's I just know. amazing right so it's a lean high protein and the salt and all that stuff that drips off and then my eggs i put them in there and i and they never burn i've never burnt my eggs but they get so crispy in it i cut them with a knife now so what do you mean you have crispy eggs like i haven't tried this yet yeah so crispy eggs is literally like biting into bread so the outsides, okay. right? The outsides are so crispy that it feels like a nice crunchy bread mm. that I, when I'm cutting with a knife, it's like, <laughs> really, you can eh? hear it cutting. And so the inside is still soft, right? Mm. Cause I just cook it. When I cook the pan fried, I cook it, I flip it. So the inside is still soft. And then I just throw it in the air fryer and then I just flip it at the, the halfway point. So usually leave it in there for about 12 minutes, 12, 15 minutes. And then, and I go and do stuff. And that's the key thing is mm -hmm. that for me, like I, like we said, I'm always in and out of meetings. I'm running around. I got to go do this and that. So I just boom, set it and, uh, it'll tell me when to flip it. I go over there, I'll flip it. Right. Yep. And, uh, if my Turkey bacon is too much, I'll put it on the bottom mm -hmm. rack or I'll flip them, whichever one wants to get nice and roasty. Yep. And, um, and then I come back and I have like the best eggs. Yesterday I cooked up almost two of the big egg whites and I ate two yep. and that's all lean protein. I don't put an egg in there. Yeah. So the, my fat count is so low. I don't eat, I'm not eating bread. 
Yeah. And uh, I have the turkey bacon as my toast. So I'm just eating lean proteins and fats. And so uh, for me, it's been a game changer. Now you want to talk about like French fries. I love eating out. Mm -hmm. Dude, I have no want to eat out. I know. Right? You can throw, Nary bought these chicken nuggets or whatever from Costco. Mm -hmm. Put them in the old air fryer with some, oh my God. It was literally like I was eating at a restaurant. Yeah. Right? So I'm like, it's a restaurant is 75% more. And, and I love restaurants. So I do it to support. There's some foods that you can't just throw in the air fryer. Vermicelli, I cannot make that at home. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. A really good pizza, I got to go and get that, right? Like, yeah. you know, there's that level, yeah. right? But you can't eat like that every day. Whereas I can have these chicken nuggets or, you know, a portion of French fries every single day cooked to perfection. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think the, you know, we could talk about air fry recipes all day and how yeah. great it is. But if you're looking at RJ while he's talking right now, look how lit up he is oh, about yeah. a kitchen appliance. It's something that's actually pretty special. And this is one of the life-changing things. And this is why I would suggest everybody get an air fryer, especially if you're a dude. There's nothing that guy, guys don't really love cooking. No. They don't really. Some guys do. We like to barbecue stuff. Yeah. That's sort of our domain. But when <laughs> it comes down to actually preparing a full entire meal... I don't know what it is. It's just maybe not in our DNA. I have no idea how to explain it, but I never really wanted to try. No. Now that I have this air fryer, and look at you. You were yeah. the same way. And oh, now yeah. you're talking like you're a chef with all your <laughs> yeah. recipes and oh, yeah. flipping the shells. Well, you're and, making burritos that look absolutely fantastic. Isn't it? I make quesadillas. I love quesadillas. If there's a reason why you should get an air, air fryer, is simply to get confidence in the kitchen and yes. learn how to fuel yourself. Yeah. And here's another thing. Why do we get a Pampered Chef? So Rick and I are, are uh, big endorsers of the Pampered Chef. We do sell them. Yep. We have a we have a website, and we'll post it in the comments below, yep. and or in the description. And I've owned the uh, the T fowl one, which is kind of like the drawer, the big right? bowl, the big bowl, yep. right? And it's honestly, it does a good job too. Yeah, nothing wrong but, with it. But the problem with the big bowl is that if I want to have a couple different things in there, if I want to like, you can't put eggs and turkey bacon in mm -hmm. at the same time, right? They need different cooking levels. And if I want something more crispier and something just to be heated at the bottom, then you can't do that. And the problem is like when you put mountains of stuff into this pan, if you, let's say you have uh, French fries, right? Mm -hmm. So French fries in the air fryer, no problem. You can put them on because it's cooking from both ends. Mm -hmm. Whereas with this one, if they're layered on top of each other, you're going to have cold spots. Right. And so with this Pampered Chef, I like it because number one, it's name brand, right? Mm -hmm. So you can get them cheaper. And people ask me like, oh, how much is it? I'm like, I don't know, like 300 bucks, right? But yeah. if you go on Amazon and you look at something with similar features with no name, with no warranty, with no customer service behind it, you're going to spend about the same. You might save yourself 20 or 30 or 40 bucks. Sure. But the problem is, is the name brand Pampered Chef is like getting Mercedes. Mercedes will always back their brand. Yep. If you have a problem with your car at Mercedes, you talk to them and somebody's going to take care of you. That's what I like. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'll pay a little bit more for that kind of assurance. Yep. Whereas when you get these other ones, you know, who are you going to talk to? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like where you did this come me. from? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then we're going to be you like, yeah, but when I mean, it comes to Pampered Chef, so yeah. the, I like this one. I don't like the trays because I never know if my food is cooked or not, so I'm constantly losing all that heat, mm -hmm. opening it up, looking at it. Um, I like this one because it's got the 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 glass window, yep. like a like an oven, so you can see if it's being cooked, and it's also With got a light. A light. Yep. Yeah, so that's key. We haven't yep. used the, the rotisserie yet yep. for French fries and that because I find you don't even need it. Yeah. Plus, it's got shelves. Shelves. That's the other thing. Shelves right? is huge. So you're talking about the old bowl style. Yep. We're talking about shelves, so you can actually put something on the top shelf, yep. something on the bottom shelf, yep. and they can cook independent of each other yeah. and not mashed into a bowl. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I had nachos the other day. Oh. Now the thing about nachos is the cheese will drip, right? So here's a little hack. There's the drip pan. Yes. Use the drip pan as your nacho pan. There you go. Dude, the best nachos. I used to put them in the oven and some spots would come cold. Uh, you know, sometimes it would just get too burnt. Yeah. Dude, put them in the put them in the air fryer on the on the drip pan. Yeah. Don't you think it's too small though? Perfect show. But I'm only I'm only eating for one. So yeah, if you're cooking could, for a family, well, then could you cook for a family? You can 100 percent cook for a family. You yeah. you could probably do the nachos on there, but for me, I'm a very I don't want to clean up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I could probably layer in and have three servings of nachos in there. No problem. But the problem is like, I'm just cooking for me now. Mm -hmm. Right. And so as a guy where my wife is busy, we make different food. She, she hates cooking and not me not eating it. Yeah. This is the perfect solution for, for somebody that is, wants their own food. Love it. And, uh, you know, so she cooks for the kids. She cooks for herself. Now she eliminated 25%. And I'm not saying my wife, that her duty is to cook, but she just naturally cooked and yep. she would, she'd cook food and I wouldn't eat it because yep. she likes soups and stuff. And I'm, <laughs> I'm not a soup guy. I like fried foods. Yep. And now that I can have my fried crispy food 
with no fat, yeah. like no saturated dip fats, comes out crispy like it's sat in a, what are those things called, deep fryer? Yeah. Dude, like I'm set, man. Yeah. I'm set. And so the, the money that I'm saving, the time that I'm saving, and I'm eating food that I actually like. And yeah. I mean, that's what kind of got these guys. Right? And your confidence so in the kitchen. You can kind of see them right there. Yeah. Like yeah. these happen eating fried eggs, baby. Yeah. Those aren't painted on? Those those are partially spray tanned, <laughs> but the majority of it is all me. <laughs> well done. Get yourself an air fryer, guys. Get an air fryer, but get Pampered Chef air fryer. Look up two buff dudes. Let us know. We'll get you on our list. Keep it real, 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 keep it real